Humans created farming around 12,000 years ago, but there was another species that independently created farming way before we did. 55 million years before, in fact. It wasn't the Neanderthal or any ape. It was actually the lowly ant, an insect. Specifically these guys. You've all probably seen a clip like this on a nature documentary setting the scene of a wild rainforest. But in the rainforest, it's not actually obvious what these ants are doing. Let me put it this way. If you put leafcutter ants into an ant farm and then you watched them build a colony, you'd have an ant farm farm. They don't farm corn or cows, but they farm fungus. We'll come back to that in a second. Leafcutter ants, like the famous atacephalotes, literally cut leaves and then carry them on their backs to their colony. But have you ever thought about what they do when they get there? Because the ants don't eat the leaves they carry, which is what I thought they did. No, they use them to grow crops. They use them for agriculture. Agriculture, by definition, is the science or practice of farming, including the cultivation of the soil for the growing of crops. Also, the rearing of animals to provide food, wool, and other products. Ants are doing this. They dig growing chambers in their colonies, down in deep tunnels to control their temperatures. They bring dew and water from the surface to the chambers to control humidity of their crops. And this is where the leaves come in. The atta ants drink the sap, clean the leaves, crush them up, and then compost them with their own fecal liquid. Delicious. And the fungus, a basidiomycete type, grows on this soil that they create. Then they harvest bits of the fungus and use it to feed their colony just like human farmers. We are still new to farming. Wheat is one of the oldest farmed grains, but it wasn't until Norman Borlaug bred two special wheats together that humans could finally use it to feed millions upon millions of people. He won the Nobel Peace Prize for this in 1970. But that is noob science in comparison to ants who have been using agriculture to feed millions of ants for millions of years. Atta ants have evolved over millions of years alongside their crops, weeding, watering, greening. One species of ant has even cultivated a fungal lime that produces high yields to feed even more ants. No peace prize for them. The coolest part about this is some of the 250 species of ant that have evolved to agriculture have also cultivated their crops so much that without the ants, it would die. The fungus only exists to feed the ants. Another cool thing, ants aren't the only farming species out there. Termites are also fungal farmers, and here you thought they were just eating your house. Nope, they feed some of those bits to their fungal friends. Damselfish are the only known fish to be agriculturalists, farming algae for their food. There are even species of beetle and snail with this practice, but come on, why should we care about this? Because we've only been farming for 12,000 years, and scientists are not sure farming is a sustainable practice. We have to feed billions of people meaning we need to use monocultures, one super plant that can feed lots of people. That's what the ants do, just like the borlog wheat. But growing crops this way can deplete the soil, like with corn, or subject large crops to disease, like with bananas. The atta ants and other fungal farmers have been cultivating these monocultures for millions of years. If we can learn how they manage to avoid devastation by disease or how they protect their crops from parasites, maybe we could support another few billion of our own human colony. Aren't ants awesome? Want to learn more about them? We talked to a bug scientist, calls himself the Ant Man. You can check it out right here. What do you all think of these mini farmers? Let us know down in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and come back for more videos. Weaver ants. They weave, therefore the name. Some call them green ants, but over here we call them rang rang which means big red ants. We call them exactly what they look like. This example of a quintessential society is made of mainly female warriors, or the workers. There are also many regal queens and beautiful princesses. These princesses are typically 20 to 25 millimeters long, very large compared to the workers that are usually 5 to 10 millimeters long. They will eventually leave the colony to start new colonies of their own. They have wings that aren't fully developed yet, so they can't fly at the moment, but soon they will, with the drones. Nah, not the kind you wish for Christmas. More like these guys. So on this first and last nuptial flight, a princess will mate with several drones of her choice, find a location for a nest, shed her wings, and become a queen. 
Once she becomes a queen, she will stay in the nest forever. As a queen, she will be taken care of by thousands of workers, night and day, and she'll lay hundreds of eggs every day to ensure the survival and growth of the colony, including the next group of royalty. Some say only one queen can live in a colony with multiple nests, referred to as a monogeny. However, in this specific weaver ant colony of my backyard, in a single nest, I've found three queens. Surprise, surprise! The whole colony is diligently served by the minor and major workers. Minor workers rarely venture out of the nest. To explore, to forage, to expand are the tasks of major workers. Together, they take care of everything, from challenging intruders, to taking care of the wounded, tending the grubs, becoming bridges, living staples, building the nest, and even organizing an expedition. all carried out without a single command, instinctively. Some say they only eat small insects. Well, then these must be cases of trophy hunting. <laughs> I think if you're looking for an example of the word muck, you can try getting a bit closer to their nest. It all but guarantees a painful encounter. Strong mandibles ensure a painful slicing bite, and the spray of formic acid into the bite adds more pain to the injury. With such a painful, have I mentioned painful, defense, <laughs> weaver ants are very effective in scaring intruders away, and they're used as a natural biocontrol to keep pests from eating at tropical trees. They're also, in fact, the oldest example of biocontrol that has been documented. Some studies have shown that having a colony on a tree can increase crop production by quite a bit. This colony in particular guards the mango tree in my backyard. And I'm really happy that they're there.